Hi, everybody. My name is Anthony Quinn. This is Quinspiracy. And uh, this is another semi-serious episode. <laughs> um, I have graciously, I have back on the show, Mark Sargent. How you doing? Hey, man. Nice to be back. <laughs> ha- hasn't been that long. Yeah, I mean, dude, I feel like we're blowing down. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Um, I just want to say this real quick. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, uh, I'm not looking to probe for any, like, um, drama or anything like that. I I actually am interested in this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And my girl's kind of interested in it. And, I mean, I sent you the picture of my baby with the the mouse pad. Right, the flat earth (laughs) mouse pad. Very nice. (laughs) And, you know, we talked about this, and you said there would be backlash. And it's not the most terrible backlash, but there literally is a ray. You yeah. Know, I mean, people are saying I'm their favorite flat earth comedian now. <laughs> really? Well, that's nice. I mean, that's that's better than that's better than some. I mean, there's some shows that get real, real pushback. So good. <laughs> but this has only been a little while. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I said, like, people's reaction to it is still um it's just their their body language when you start talking about it is so ugly. Yeah. Yeah, very yeah. true. Well, again, it's it's the conditioning. They're they're so wrapped up in again, if you're told for most of your life that the world is the way, you know, it's this way and then someone comes back and says, "No, it's not, man." And they have and they're not joking. <laughs> they say it with complete conviction. It's you you have to respond to it. Yeah, yeah. No, I just wanted to say that because like this isn't Dateline or anything. I'm no. not trying to trip you up. I am genuinely interested in this stuff. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I wanted to start with is, what's the top, the three biggest proofs of flat Earth that you have? If somebody asks you, what's the three biggest the th- um, pieces of proof you have right off the top of your head? The three biggest proofs that I throw at people. It's it's out of my top five, but I'll give you the the, the top three anyway. You know, I'll, I'll pick different three. Uh, the first one is obviously going to be long distance, distance photography. That's the one that most flat okay. earthers go to. It's the easiest one to understand. A picture is worth a thousand words, which is when you look off into the distance, eventually whatever that object is, is going to go over the side of the curve because, you know, the curve has a mathematical formula to it, according to mainstream science, which is eight inches per mile per mile or eight inches per mile squared. And so a boat should eventually go off into the distance and go over the side of the curve. And a lighthouse, at a certain distance, you shouldn't be able to see it anymore. Or a building, or whatever you're looking at. That's that's number one. Uh, number two... For... And that's fairly recent, right? They've fa- that's fairly recent with the, the cameras that can zoom that. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I mean, if that. you're you're old enough, if you remember, if heck, you even went back 20 years, you, your Super 8, whatever you were using, you could have a $3,000 yeah. camera, and the, the resolution was still for crap. You could zoom in. Yeah. I mean, it was good at close range, but at distances, you were looking at, at a whole bunch of smudges. And when yeah, HD... Yeah, te- was very shaky. It would be very, very shaky. Yeah, ve- it was not good. And now we've got some fantastic... I will say this. The, the technology... Yeah, we may have not gotten the future world of tomorrow that we were promised a long time ago. But there were some aspects in the communications world and the computer world that, yes, it even exceeded what, what we thought it was going to be. Um, and camera technology was that. We couldn't have done this 20 years ago. Couldn't have done it. The the HD, mm. you know, even the, the, the Nikon P1000. Uh, I mean, I'm really surprised they didn't send us cameras because we, our community, bought so many Nikon P900s and P1000 cameras, uh, which with ridiculous zoom on them. Um, but that's number one. Number two would be the gravity versus the vacuum of space problem which is okay. um, I thought you, you they had a demonstration you had a demonstration with was it with water well you can do, do all sorts of fun different de- de- demonstrations the, the the reason why I like it so much is it goes against what science has laid down which is thermodynamics says that pressure cannot exist to non-pressure without a barrier and that it is not a, a guideline, it is not a rule, it is a law. You cannot get around this. It's why when you blow up a balloon with your fingers, 
and you let go, you know, the balloon is always going to fly off away from you because the pressure is going to equalize. It's tough for people to visualize, though, because a vacuum looks to our eyes identical than a non-vacuum, which is why you can get away with it with, with movies all the time. You know, in, in astronaut movies, you can say, I'm in a vacuum, right? It's like, no, you're not. But we don't know any difference. You know, it's, it, you know, the... It's sort of like the temperature of a room. The temperature of a 20, 20 degrees in the room looks the same as 70 degrees. It makes no difference. Mm. But anyway, the point is, is that if pressure needs a container, then we live in a, you know, we have, at, we have air pressure all around us, right? It's ni mostly nitrogen and a little bit of oxygen. Whoa, where's the container around the world? There, mm. there is no container. And, and people say, oh, well, gravity is the... No, 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 no. Gravity is not a container. It supposedly is a force. The question is, what happens when, gra when, when our atmosphere thins out and then it finally becomes the vacuum of space? What happens there? What happens at the bleeding edge of space? In fact, tell me exactly where the bleeding edge of space is. And I've had people in academia come back and say, well, again, it's a complete theory. That well, it, the particles are so few that it doesn't the the vacuum of space doesn't really have much to pull against. And I'm going, okay, here's where that all falls apart. Imagine you have a box, right? There's a cardboard box, an Amazon box, right? You know, a little bit of tape on the bottom, just a little bit, and you fill it with packing popcorn. You pick up the box. What happens? Everything's fine. The packing popcorn is light. It it's just fine. It just it will not bust through the bottom of that box. Put the box back down fill it put put books on top of it or bricks or something like that put something really heavy on top of that packing popcorn popcorn then pick up the box again what happens the weight of the the bricks or the books or whatever you have will just force the packing popcorn through the bottom of that box and the whole thing will become a big mess and you're saying what's the point my point is is that's what you're talking about if, if you think that the, the force of the vacuum of space is not pulling everything. It's not pulling just the light particles. It's going after everything that isn't nailed down, including the water, for that matter. And no one, no one will talk about this. No, it's like, okay, what, I'll give you one more, a real quick example. No, it's cool. Yeah, which, no, it's cool. Which is, imagine you are, your room, you have a second story to your room right now. And you, the second, whatever the floor is above you, you turn into a vacuum chamber. It doesn't even have to be that big. Right? We're talking about tiny, you know, 80 square feet, 100 square feet vacuum chamber. And you have a valve above you. You pop it. What happens? It's not like the movies. It's instant. It's violent. All the air in your room is going upstairs. The plain and simple. That is just how it works. You can watch videos on this all day long that science has done. So the question is, why didn't the gravity in your room keep the air in your room instead of going upstairs? And, and you say, well, because the, the, the force, the, the pressure differential, the vacuum wins. The vacuum wins every time. And then I say, okay, walk outside. Why is the air still here? And I've, I've had people even come back and say, well, because there's more gravity outside. I go, you mean the exact same gravity that was in your room 20 feet away? There's more gravity outside? It's like, why, <laughs> why is the atmosphere still in your, why, why is our, why are we still breathing? And again, they have to go back. They only have one answer. And then they say, well, it's gravity. And it's like, why is it gravity? Because if it wasn't gravity, we'd be dead. And I go, you see where that argument has kind of a cyclical problem to it, right? And I go, it can't be any other reason except for gravity. Cannot be any other reason except gravity. Well, that's what they say. They say they don't know what it is. Well, yeah, they exactly. They don't know what gravity is, no, but it, then they get they get crazy when you're saying that it doesn't exist. That's just that's yeah. just very interesting to me. And all these questions I'm asking you are questions that I have. Yeah, you yeah. Know, that, well, um, you know, because I'll tell you, I I'm I think I'm about thirty percent right now, pal. Hang on. Well, good for I will. I'll I'll get you the rest of the way, man. Before before it's over. I mean, Neil Neil Tyson. Every I might have to move. I might have to move in with you. <laughs> no one's going to want to hire me now. Go ahead. Okay. Every scientist has said that they can't tell you what gravity is. They can only tell you what it does. And yeah. any, sci any science that says they know what gravity is is lying to your face. They do not. Absolutely do not know what it is. They say it's a magical molecular force that pulls things down to the center of a mass, in this case a sphere. And, and then people say, well, what's gravity for um, the flat earth? I go, well, gravity is just some magical molecular force that pulls things straight down, right, into whatever, where we are. The bigger question yeah. is, though, what, what, do, what part does density play into this? 
because the less yeah. less dense things rise and heavier density things fall. And I, I threw this at a, a woman the other day because she was giving me a crap about gravity. And I go, okay, fine. You take a beach ball, you hold it underwater, right? You let it go. It pops up to the surface. Did it defy gravity? No. No, it just popped to the surface because it wasn't filled with helium. It just popped to the surface because it was less dense than the water around it. So it was going to rise to that mm. level. But it was more dense than the air. Now, if you filled that same beach ball with helium, it would just keep going up. Which, again, yeah. begs the question, what happens when helium and hydrogen and some of the lesser, you know, lighter than air molecules get to space? Do they just leave? Or do they sit there and and people and people say again they they keep saying gravity I go or it could be a pressurized system you know doesn't the whole air pressure thing make more sense if we're actually in a pressurized system or let's take it one step further doesn't the whole greenhouse gases thing make more sense if it's an actual greenhouse with an actual barrier people you know, that always <laughs> bugged me where people says oh this greenhouse gases thing where it reaches a certain level and then it traps the heat no. No. Okay. Sorry. Um. So that was point two. Uh, point two takes takes a little longer than I thought. Point yeah. three. No, I'll, it's okay. I'll it's give right. you. I'll give you a quick one though. Um. Point three. We'll we'll just go straight to the the unsolvable question. Yeah, I'm, I'm, listen, it's cool, man. You know, I'm in no hurry. All yeah. right. Point point three, and normally it's point five on my top five, but we'll just jump straight to five. In this case, three, which is the Van Allen radiation belt trap question. Which is, okay. are the Van Allen radiation belts announced by Van Allen back in the 50s, super, super deadly belts of radiation around the Earth, supposedly 60,000 miles thick, are they deadly? Yes or no? It's a simple question. Now, if you say yes, because that's what NASA said, because it was a NASA, Van Allen was a NASA employee, then you, know, you say, okay, fine. How did the Americans make multiple round trips? I think like six, six round trips to the moon and back without any shielding at all against radiation. There's only three things that can stop radiation. Lead, gold, which is twice as dense as lead, and a whole bunch of water, which is used in power plants. You do not, yeah. you do not yeah. use this. And so why, yeah. what, 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 what happened? And, and then you come, then you might flip and you say, oh, okay, fine. Well, they're, they're not that deadly. It's like, okay, if you say they're not that deadly, then you can go straight to the NASA website or look up a wonderful little video on, on any, there's, it's all over the place now. It's called Orion trial by fire, which is the Mars mission, which says that, oh yeah, by the way, we can't test man capsules. Uh, anytime soon uh, to leave Earth orbit because we haven't solved the radiation problem. Like, what do you mean? You, you solved it. Solved it 50 years ago. You, you solved it with Apollo. It was flawless. No one, not a single problem using just plastic and aluminum to stop the radiation. What, what did you do? Yeah, what? it's like an inch of aluminum. We talked about this on the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An inch of aluminum. Yeah. And, you know, a couple of my friends watched that um, when I listened to it. And, you know, they liked it. They said you were cool. You were nice. But they just can't get their mind around I, um, I, I the, the moon hoax. I you know wouldn't. What I'm saying? Yeah, like they, I sorry. wouldn't blame them. I wouldn't blame them at all. The moon hoax. Yeah. Okay. How should I do this? The, no, but I'm saying, like, he specifically said about the radiation. He goes, "How do you know radiation is bad?" I said, <laughs> because Van Allen, because Van Allen <laughs> said it was bad. You can look it up. He was really clear about this. He said, he said, yeah, never ever go up there. That's why I think he got stuck. He got put into a, a, a backed into a corner because he announced in 1959. He said, he said, oh yeah, Van Allen radiation, you know, my radiation bells. I discovered them. They're really, really deadly. And then when Kennedy says we're gonna go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. It's like, okay, then the press run back to him and they say, oh, hey, Van Allen, how are you guys, how are you going to get past the Van Allen belts, which you said you could never, ever get past? And he goes, uh, we're going to go real fast. And that, and that was yeah. his answer. Yeah. So no, 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 no. Well, again, that's what the trap question is. Either they're deadly or they're not deadly. If they're not deadly, then how the Americans do it? And if... <laughs> It, oh no! I'm sorry. If they are deadly, how the Americans get through it? And if they're not deadly, why the Americans say they're deadly? See what I mean? You can't win. Yeah. E if, either way, you're, you're. If they're not deadly, if they're not deadly, I'm going to open a comedy club in the nuclear reactor. There, there you, you go. go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And people, yeah, the people that say, oh, there's an, there's no radiation. Yeah, okay. Um, I say this. I say, fine. Find me a dentist 
that will not that you can when he gives you that lead blanket to put on your you know on you uh you can just say nah i don't need it find me a dentist that'll let that slide no no no, no. radiation uh, in my opinion anyway radiation exists Radi you can you can die from radiation all day long now well, it, you know, yeah when they keep saying that they they're not leaving low earth orbit i mean every, they all say it yeah. Like they, they act like leaving low Earth orbit is a big deal. Yeah. Like a really big deal because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. of the Van Allen. You can't, I mean, come on. Anyone that gives me gives you grief about the moon mission, you say, okay, they stopped going in 1972. Why hasn't anyone been back since 1972? That is a long, yeah. long time. I mean, again, remember, that's, that's most of the 70s, all the 80s, all the 90s, 2000, 2010, halfway to 2020. And... Well, actually, we're in 2021, and n nobody's gone back. No, nobody's gone back. I was, it's I was talking about the, the, the what? Go ahead, go ahead. No, it, go ahead. It's go just ahead. okay. Why? Why haven't they gone back? And and even if you could say the Americans say, oh, you know, we we lost the technology. We just don't know how to do it anymore. Which is the first time ever in the history of technology which we forgot how to do something. So come on. If, I know that's ridiculous. If you wanted to bring I back, believe that they actually had to had to come out and say that. Yeah. The guy who they went to interview about it interview him about it doesn't even really have any answers no no anyway, i mean and, and it's never it's never happened look if, if you wanted to bring back eight track tapes you could spend all your money build a factory and build eight track tapes it wouldn't be that tough to to, to redo that whole thing the everything you need is out there to do it to build it from scratch you can't just say oh yeah we just don't have the ability to go to the moon anymore what are you talking about we've got better everything why couldn't you go to the moon now? It's, yeah. just, it's, yeah. it's just, you know, they'll, they'll agree with you about a lot of stuff, yeah. but they just won't take that last leap. So I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I want, I want to move on and ask you, did, I, I think I mentioned this to you last time we talked, Yeah. a question that I had. I don't know if you thought about it or not. What? Um, who do you think, because to have all this happen, there has to be some major players throughout history um, that really um, influence the globe right or, or or made everybody go away from the flat earth sure who do you think the five biggest deceivers in history are five okay the five biggest deceivers in history <laughs> um i'm not going to pick them in chronological order because no, uh, i mean part part of, is, part of this is part of this is going to be speculation if i had to go number one i'd have to go with um the vatican because oh, yeah. okay. they because they're the oldest of the well at least as far as I know the the, the big societies you know the, the remnants of the, of the Roman Empire uh, they they have secrets within secrets they got their own little tiny country and they they run a lot of stuff um, yeah, I've been there it's crazy it's crazy when you go there it's like oh my god what's all this gold <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. What's going on? They, I mean, they were the guy. They were the ones, for example, that if if, if you believe the stories, that sponsored the search for the um, the Ring of Power, otherwise known as Solomon's the sig signet of Solomon. Um, that you know, they were the ones supposedly that financed the what became the Knights Templar, and yeah, to, yeah, to find yeah. to basically dig up Solomon's temple. So if you're, if you're going into, you know, we're, if we're talking about people that, that not just are influencing the globe, but are, you know, kind of bending society to their will, um, I would go to the Vatican first. Uh, I'd probably, they I mean, know it's flat. The, the Vatican knows the earth is flat. Oh, good. Yes. Yes. But again, remember these, okay. so, these societies and others that I'll, I'll list off real quick, you couldn't do anything about it until the internal combustion engine was invented because you just didn't have the tools to verify anything for you so let's say you know mm. in fact let's let's we'll skip ahead so let's say the vatican knows and the vatican was the one that helped kind of create the whole mason thing which was the templars and the priori of cyan and that whole war which ended up being england and france blah 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 doesn't really matter yeah. In the early days, because let's say you had, let's say the Vatican in the in the Library of Alexandria you know, before it was burned, and you know, let's say they they got out some of the old maps. What could you do with them? Not much. Again, with wooden ships and horses, which was what you had for year year dec century after century, um, you didn't have the ability to explore it. 
So mm. once they figured it out, if you want to talk about the people that, that basically covered it up, I mean, yeah, the Vatican and some of the secret societies pushed the globe back in the in the fifteen yeah. from the fifteen hundreds up until the nineteen sixties, four hundred five hundred years. But until you figured it out, until you could actually go out there and explore for yourself, you don't really know for sure. You got a hunch, but you can't. You get. You don't have independent verification. And so that's when the Soviet Union and the United States get involved because they were out there. I think they were teammates looking for this thing. Um, Admiral Byrd, I don't even know. He probably knew. But would I call him the biggest deceiver? No. Would I call the U.S. government? Probably. Um, uh, because they were the ones, that, the first ones that decided, okay, obviously we didn't build this place but we got to keep this thing a secret because there's got you know knowledge is power that's, civilization has already been built what happens to the population if we tell them will they burn everything to the ground will they freak out possibly um the the roswell thing did not go over well and that was more of an accident where, you know, a military base on the wet in the West <laughs> found this thing and was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> look what we got. And the Pentagon, which yeah, I've heard so many different things about that. I don't even know what to believe. I believe it. No, 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 no. I, I believe it. And here's why, because it was shortly after World War Two. And some of these guys were, you know, still looking for you know, glory days. And I think the if you ever get the chance, watch the um, the movie Roswell, made for TV movie with Martin Sheen and oh the guy from Dune, um, the lead from Dune, the sleeper has mm. a, the sleeper has awakened. I'll have to look it up. Anyway, um, okay. But the 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 story went is that it crashed, and then everyone was just naive about everything. The rancher is like, hey, stop crashing your stuff on my property. You know, it's like, come on, get this. I mean, Darn kid. yeah, because yeah, well, no, I mean, going went to the military base. Yeah, it's like you go, you're testing aircraft. You can't crash it on my property. And and then they come out there and they're like, what the hell? You know, they're calling people. It's like, is anyone testing anything? And then then the, the base commander out there says, you know, he's like, yeah, we got a freaking flying saucer. I'm going to take total credit for this. And he calls, he calls up the papers as fast as he can. And it took like several days before the Pentagon all the way in the East Coast. Because remember, this was back really pre-television. Um, before, yeah. and they, they immediately call back. It's like, shut up, shut the hell up. And, and they, they yeah. said, you, you have to retract everything. You have to retract freaking everything. And it's like, just, we're going to, we're going to do a press release. We're going to do, we're going to say it's a weather balloon. You're going to sit here in front of the thing and you're going to take it. And that's it. We're going to bury this. And that, and they were lucky in that if it was any later, they would have been really, really, really tough to bury. But anyway, so point was I, I just had a question about the vatican real quick i just wanted yep. to ask you this um the flat earth model actually lines up with the creator more so why wouldn't why would the flat earth want to go to a globe i mean i'm sorry oh, why, why wouldn't the, the why wouldn't the want church want to wanna, why, why wouldn't the church want a globe <sighs> probably just control which is again okay. remember the civilization they they want to you're right there, there's a good point there, and that is, okay, why did the Vatican go along with this? I'm not really sure. Maybe the Vatican, they... the, the Vatican are, are, they were pagans supposedly anyway. So yeah. Uh, it's the king. It's the king that they, they embraced Catholicism so they could keep their, their stuff. My, my guess is that it opens up too many questions that they weren't prepared to answer. Meaning, you know, now we know, you know, our biblical scholars, and especially in our community, they, they say, look, the Bible's a flat earth book, straight up. There are so many references to it, which we didn't see. We couldn't see the forest for the trees that um, you, the, in fact, the only verse out there was Isaiah 40, 22. He's who sitteth upon the circle of the earth that even hints at, at, at anything different. But people are quick to say, it's like, oh, yeah, circle is not. In the ancient Hebrew, is not globe, it's not sphere, it's not ball. So maybe the Vatican was looking at it going like, yeah, you know, this is going to be a lot of work. To, to, I mean, seriously, it's yeah. like, the, you know what, we're fine the way we are. Let's not open up this can of worms because if we mm. do, it's never going to end. And so, mm. and who knows, maybe at that point, maybe the, the, the unknown, which was, do you really want people... 
at that stage start thinking about, well, if it is flat, remember it's that, I, I don't know if you remember seeing the clues, but it's like, if you tell people there's a fence out there, that's all they're going to care about is the fence. It's yeah, the, we, you did the thing with the mouse, right? You were talking about the mouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, any other life yeah. form, if you could put them in a wildlife preserve, they're fine. They're like, oh, yeah, I've got everything you need. i got everything you need. You put humans in a massive wild preserve, even just a few, all they care about is the fence, which is, why is that fence there? Who made the fence? Why am I on this side? What's on the other side? Have I angered the fence makers? I Maybe I should sacrifice something, you know, to the fence people. Maybe I should fire some nuclear weapons at you. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's a male thing. That's, yeah, that's a male thing, too. Which is, that's the, I mean, that, that was, that, which is a natural thing. Shoot it's your like, phallic missiles. shoot your phallic missiles at my fervor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, well, I mean, you see a wall out there. It's like, hey, there's a wall. Get the cannon, right? And it's like, cannon's not working. What else we got? And they're just keep, just keep piling on, which is why the first shots they took at it in 1959 were um were in the low megaton re yield i mean those megaton in the late 50s that, those were hard to come by you know you couldn't just get those at a drug and they were telling people they were testing that they were testing them in outer space yeah that's strange to even tell people yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it it was you know, and, I don't know. and they tested it over the oceans you know they did big tests like over hawaii but the first shots were in the low megaton range and then after that it was medium kiloton range and by that i mean like a couple hundred kilotons which is still way bigger than hiroshima and nagasaki um but anyway okay right. it, so but the where was i getting where was i going with this the oh, oh, we were going. We were on the biggest deceiver. So oh yeah. So U.S. Go, U.S. We can just talk about some of them. So the yeah. U.S. government and the Soviet Union have got to be right up there okay. because they were the ones that were tag teaming it because they had to create the fake space race, which was okay. You know, I'm not going to pick on NASA directly because NASA just took their marching orders from the government. Remember, NASA is DoD. They always have been. People, I just love me. It's like, no, oh, they're the face of science. I go, NASA is absolutely DOD. They are built on, in fact, they're uniquely military. I mean, they were built on the, the rocket technology of the still burning embers of the Nazi war machine, right? You know, half the people, you know, Werner von Braun, where do you think he came from? By the way, I think that's a real hypocrisy, hypocrisy of war in that if you're really, really intelligent, <laughs> you're more valuable alive you know, to, you know, which is why the the Soviet Union and the United States divvied up the 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 rocket scientists, the guys that made the the V ones and the V twos, and anyway. So the Soviet Union, so, so I, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just gonna say I was thinking um like Copernicus and Isaac Newton and people like that too. Like you um, think they were totally in on it? No, like, no, no. I don't think I don't think they were in on it. Okay. I, it how? He, he, for me, you can't be completely in on it if you haven't seen it for yourself. Me again, okay. I, if I was if I was back, if I was king of France in 1500 and I had a map, someone showed me, look from the secret vault, you know, your worshipness. <laughs> Here, look, look at this wonderful thing. I'd look at it, it's like, wow, that's really great. Can we prove it? No. Well then, how do you know it's real? Can I take a picture of it. Yeah, yeah. Can you can, can we send ships out there? No, they'll all die. Or well, then what the hell am I supposed to do with this thing? Until unless you have the ability to check it out for yourself, you don't know. So they're they're not yeah. culpable, for lack of a better term. Do I think there were scientists out there that knew? No, not really, um, because you'd want like okay. people say like you know does Neil does Neil deGrasse Tyson know? Why the hell would you tell him? Uh, you you want him acting yeah, as yeah. naturally as possible. Do you tell the president? So I asked you that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, do you need to? Do you tell the president of the United States? No, because you want these people <laughs> acting naturally. You want them not having anything weighed on them, which is why, again, the the powers that be they learn from their mistakes. I I will say that, which is with the uh, Apollo astronauts, they told them. And those guys were yeah. freaking train wrecks after that. They were just, just oh, yeah. they were they big. were nervous. They looked like they were gonna cry. Do I think we talked about that in the last podcast? Do yeah, but go ahead. do I think they told them in the beginning? No. I think the the movie, the right stuff and all the enthusiasm, I think the astronaut recruiting program was absolutely legit. And these guys wanted to be heroes. Which was, by the way, that's straight out of Capricorn 1, which is all these astronauts were perfectly fine, and then all of a sudden they're pulled into a room and they're saying, Yeah, okay, so you're not going up there. 
<laughs> and here's why. <laughs> and and you know that hits them like a ton of bricks because they're like, wait, yeah. I, I wanted to be a I wanted to be a hero. I've always wanted to be an astronaut. This is this was my lifelong goal. And you're telling me I can't go because we it's impossible to go. Uh, that that would just destroy you. So th- every yeah. ever since then, the astronauts you don't tell them. You just compartmentalize things. So anyway, that, okay, so, so, so the big the big deceivers. Let, let we'll just do t- top five would be the Vatican, um, the Masons. Even though they knew uh, everything, they didn't really they couldn't do anything about it. The people that did know and did something about it would be the Soviet Union, the United States government. <sighs> And then maybe a secret group that's unknown, uh, a, a secret, mm, uh, an okay. X, an X Files group, you know, a dark room with a lot of I guys. Like a smoke. Shadow, shadow, shadow government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're okay. all smoking and the smoking men from X Files. That, that those group of guys, um, <laughs> which. All right, so, so, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I'm. That was it. <laughs> so, all right. So, because it seems like you know what, what I'm trying to do is I was trying to be fair. And watch all the flattered stuff, not just your stuff. But I have to say, um, your stuff is the most highly produced and easiest to watch. Oh, you mean my um, stuff or flatters in general? Your, no, your stuff. Oh, the thank you. Stuff on your chat. Thanks. Like the flatter clues, you know, when you're like, uh, it's the reader reader's digest version. I think right. that's great. And I just don't see anything else like that. Um, so I just want I want to talk about some of the things I think people really have a hard time getting their mind around. Sure. And, you know, the, the fake space thing is just, even me, man, I'm, I'm really having a hard time with that. And I know they say all the satellites don't exist. I, by the way, I don't, I don't say that. Um, in fact, I've got okay. videos. All right. I've got videos on my channel. Do I think satellites exist? Yes, I do. Do I think that okay. m- most of them are put up on rockets? No, I do not. Do I think they account for... A huge amount of bandwidth in the world no not not even close um it is not a secret out there that 90 something percent of the bandwidth of the world is undersea cables under undersea fiber optics that started out as you know telegraph lines telephone lines that you know the easiest solution is just make a crap ton of cable and lay it along the ocean and that's what we do we we spent huge amounts of money but the the this are there satellites the ninety percent that they're still holding back from us? <laughs> well, yeah, that the, uh, the well, yeah, well, you got also don't forget for people that think that uh, that the internet is this public, this big world wide web, and it's a public access. It's like no, the 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 internet is a military backbone system. It was completely military, uh, n- no different than the GPS system. It started out as military, and then it just branched off into the civilian market. So if you think uh, that you can hide on the internet from from the military, if you do stuff in the military, you know if it's serious enough, uh, they will find you. Don't 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 think that the movies the, there's some things in the movies aren't really true. Oh, anyway, so satellites are look up something called the um, the the NASA high altitude balloon program. Which is, and I've yeah, got. Yeah, that's the, I, I saw the high altitude balloon. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the the NASA is the biggest producer and the biggest consumer of helium in the world. Uh, a lot mm. of people don't know that. It's like you, you, you want to buy large amounts of helium. Well, stand in line because NASA gets most of it. Why? Because they are launching balloons with satellites on them all the time, and they can keep those satellites up there for years. Years because they can monitor exactly, you know, that they can control the elevation uh, on these things. Yeah, and yeah I've seen the pictures. There's, there's pictures with the the satellite being taken up by the balloon. Oh, right? yeah. Is there pictures? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's wonderful, there's wonderful videos and spectacular accidents when it goes wrong. Uh, they because yeah, you can lift up, you can do payloads. Uh, they got it to where they can do four tons, which is eight thousand pounds. That's a couple cars, a couple big cars. I was gonna say yeah, that's a couple cars. Yeah, couple it's it's huge. Cars. Well, yeah. if you can lift eight thousand pounds with helium, and I I was a little surprised actually that they didn't go with hydrogen. It's like yeah, I know it's an explosive <laughs> gas because hydrogen has much more lift than helium, but they don't care. They're like oh, those use really really big balloons. Then why would you ever put anything on the top of a rocket? That's where the scam. You know, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it might be three of my cars. Really? I have a Honda Civic, Honda Civic uh, 
Uh, 04 Honda Civic with all up windows. So maybe three of my Yeah, cars. three of your cars. <laughs> Definitely. But but that's where the scam comes in because there are uh, there are launch companies that will if you have a satellite, you can call up these launch companies and it's really interesting. I've actually talked to one in California. It was called um, Interorbital. I remember talking to these guys years ago. And I was cur mm. I was curious. I said because my theory was is that you would bring the satellite, you know, to whoever it was. And the satellite would, um, you know, the, they would get launched in this rocket and that it's, NASA would take over and swap out everything, the frequencies, and the NASA would control everything. And I said, does, does NASA, do you have to register your rocket with NASA uh, before you before you launch this stuff? And I was talking to the, the president and the VP of, of Interorbital at the time. And they said, no, but we do have to register with another agency. I go, really? Who? They go, the um, atmospheric and... Uh, transportation safety group or whatever it is it's it's a, wow. a special government group and every country that has these rockets has this group this atmospheric mm. and you and they say months and months and months before you even think about launching you have to send them every single aspect of your launch every spec every everything everything about telemetry everything about the payload everything and i go oh and that's what it occurred to me it's like okay well you take their satellites and you put them on balloons you let the rocket go up sure but you swap it out at the last minute or make it make a copy or make it if they have a backup satellite whatever it is you you take over and the so basically 90 percent of what's up there is on balloons and it works just fine there you go and, and people bring up cape, cape canaveral to me they bring up that like the, i saw it i was there and i saw it the rockets the rockets are real the rockets are real. Well, Elon Musk's rockets yeah. aren't real, but but the but the rockets are real. Now, are they uh, assisted? You know, if you want to have fun with it, you want to to mess with people, you could fill the uh, the a big chamber of the rocket with helium, and you know you lose use bait, you know really really light thrust and let that thing go. But what's interesting again, you can look this up. It's not hard to find. Look up the uh, the time lapse photos of the rockets. They go horizontal very very quickly they go up and up and then they arc yeah. over and they yeah, go that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. but yeah. by that time right, people lose interest in watching them and then it comes down the, mm. to the telemetry guys which is one of the other <laughs> questions which is how many guys are in on this it's like are you telling me everybody you you can't tell me that all of nasa could keep a secret i go no they don't it's only the telemetry guys and if you guys don't know what telemetry is telemetry is where the rocket is the data that's it so when the rocket leaves your binoculars range it's like i can't see it anymore you ask the telemetry guys so where is it right you see that in movies like well it's 400 miles north by northwest at cruising at blah 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 speed that's the telemetry guys and you say and you say oh okay you have to take their word for it they can say anything they want the telemetry guys are the ones that, that basically send the rockets off to to dump in the ocean somewhere and that's it that's that's the end of the show, and then they said you you can't fake telemetry data. Is now that's why NASA said they lost all the wheels. Was well, it's it's, it's telemetry it's, data. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. It's not that you can thousands. It, I thought. Yeah, it's yeah. not that you can't right. fake telemetry data, but it's got to match up and it's got to be perfect. Uh, you do that's not okay. you do okay. not want nerds analyzing raw data that's that when, yeah. that was yeah. that yeah. was that was fabricated. I, I joked about to people. I go I go the same reason why you didn't have stars in any of the moon shots. I go because the stars have to be yeah, because good. because it's all time date stamped. And if the stars are in the wrong place, you're gonna have some nerd in the middle of Nebraska at 3 a.m. in his <laughs> underwear. He's gonna be like. Hey, the belt of Orion's not supposed to be there, you know. And then all of a sudden, he crank and he posts it, and that's it. Game over. Hey, you know, with all these other nerds, it's like he's absolutely right. It's like, oh god. So you've you you've done enough. You played enough video games to use the nerd word. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, no. I'm a huge. Well, there's a difference between nerds and geeks and dorks, but I don't want to get into it too much. I'm a I am an I am a I'm just busting. No, no, no. I am a nerd and I am a huge geek. Um, a nerd. I'll give you. Right. I'll give you a quick definition. A nerd. You can say um, like whoa, whoa, how I test nerds. If I say three point one four one five nine, <laughs> a nerd will s recognize that as pi and go s rattle off the next fifty decimal places. I go. That's a nerd. A geek <laughs> will argue with you for two hours about who is the best Doctor Who, 
and um, a dork will, who's usually the most dangerous, will watch a video on how to make plasma in your microwave by taking a, a lit candle, putting a glass over it, and turning the microwave on, blowing his microwave to shreds, uh, just to prove a point. It's like, oh, wow, it does work. Yeah. Get the fire extinguisher. So, all right. So I wanted to ask you, because we're talking about, um, we were talking about the satellites, and I was talking about fake space. So I did see the thing with the guy with the face, with the face that comes in. The face, um, I think it's on, is it on a Challenger mission? Oh, yeah, yeah. Isn't that a, that's a bizarre one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's, that's from, well, it wasn't, well, it wasn't Challenger, but it was one of the, it was one of the 80s the ones. It, late, late 80s, like, early 90s. Yeah. 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 There, there wasn't just the Challenger that blew up. There was other Challenger missions, right? Well, no. Well, they weren't. They weren't named. Well, you mean before the? the you might be the, thinking the of the. Up, you yeah. might be thinking of Columbia. Okay. Oh, Columbia. Okay. Yeah, Columbia okay. flew a few times before it before it burned up and supposedly killed people. Um, but anyway, this this was an old one. It was definitely VHS quality. And yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the stuff that we were faking in the '80s and early '90s was horrendous i mean the production value i i was really outraged when i started seeing some of this it's like who are you hiring to to, to do this it's like stuff? Clay Mason. yeah it's like, like gumby's gonna gumby's gonna pop out with a helmet yeah 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 yeah. i mean i i well the, the one of the best examples which i threw at people years ago was um the iss hair the hairspray thing which is anyone knows again if you're in a in a zero g environment you know simulated fall uh like a like a plane your hair will flow if you have long hair like a woman it'll flow like it's in water and when i'm what i was watching the women in the iss they their hair was straight up like the bride of frankenstein it was permed and i'm going okay so you had a producer and a director and a director of photography that said okay we're not going to put a hat on them we're not going to put their hair back in a ponytail. We're going to perm the hair. That's our idea because we can make it look like that's zero G. It's like, no, it makes you look like you're hanging upside down, but, but it doesn't, it, but it, again, why would you, but the bigger question is astronauts will never answer this. It's like, why do you have any hair at all? In zero G environments, uh, you would be—it's like a swimming pool. You would want as little hair as possible because long hair would just clog up the filters to no end. So why why the <laughs> hell does anybody have hair? And the women had ridiculously long hair, and the, the the guys had relatively short hair. Obviously, they were military, but it's like why would the the military women have this these long the long hair? I think they they let them have long hair so they could fake it, you know pretend the, with the zero G crap. It's like. They don't do that in movies. Why did you do it? I, it's like, what film school did you drop out of that led you to this career choice? It just boggled me. Anyway. Yeah, no, but when they said, when you see the face, the one thing they said was, because NASA, of course, said it was a reflection. Right. And what they said was, they said, yeah, but look, the reflection's only in the back. It's only in the back. Right. It's not on the wing, and it's not in the foreground. Right. So it, it really can't be a reflection. No, and and also guy, also if focus. if it was a reflection, why was the guy trying so hard to get out of the reflection <laughs> in a weird yeah. way? It's like it's like why were you ducking and bobbing and weaving even if you were behind the camera guy? It's like because you obviously See, was that Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly. It's like what, he, he uh, whoever it was was obviously <laughs> not the camera guy. If even if it was a reflection, he'd have to be standing right next to him. So why would he be scrambling? You know, but in a panicked mode to, to get out of there. It's like, no, no, no. Uh, it was awful. Wild. It was just awful. Of course, those and, missions, and it, those missions bugged me because these were the, those were the missions that they got away with murder because they weren't even wearing spacesuits. They were wearing motorcycle helmets and short sleeve shirts, no gloves. Um, the, the, I know we were talking about that. Yeah. It, looks like, it looks ridiculous. Yeah. But, but again, back then we didn't care. We, we, the space program was like an afterthought. We were like, eh, whatever, whatever. I mean, the, 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 the resolution wasn't that great anyway. So was like, and they weren't doing much. That's also, it's like fine. Oh, it looked like some of it, like I said, looked like claymation. So yeah. real quick, I want to get back to Neil deGrasse Tyson before I forget. Sure. So one thing that, that I'm a little confused about, not even confused, but I wonder, he seems like, you seem like a very good debater. Like you could probably take anybody on. 
And why wouldn't he want to debate with you? Wouldn't that get get him good rating? Uh, you know, like, no. He, he, like, he likes a lot of ratings. And stuff. No, he no, no, no. Like, okay, there's, there's, to be in the public eye, you know. Yeah, I don't know. There's no. There's a couple reasons why why that will never ever ever happen. Um, the the first is is that Neil. Everyone's got their roles to play. In, in this whole... Because he hates Flat Earth, man. He hates it. Yeah, he does. You know, he says all kinds of stuff about it all the time. So that's what I'm saying. If yeah. He hates it so much. But he is, he is a stage guy. He is a yeah. public speaker that goes on stage. He's got great stage presence, great stage charisma. And he goes on stage. I, I told you last time, he's, like, he's just basically a cross between Bill Cosby and Sinbad. He could sell yeah. anything. He could... He, it, it's just blind... It, they were lucky that he went into physics because he could have sold anything and probably made more money on it. And he, but he, that's what he does. He has said publicly, he doesn't debate anybody on anything. Doesn't matter if it's flat earth or if it's the size of Jupiter or whatever it is. Oh, oh, oh so he won't, he won't debate it. No, 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 no. Okay. He won't debate anything. However, to that point, neither will most other physicists be but for a completely different reason. You don't want to be the guy or woman, whatever, uh, that that's in the room with a flat earther be, because if you do not, we'll treat it like a boxing match. If you don't take down flat earth, you don't knock them out in the first round, all the attention that was focused, uh, the, the malicious intent against flat earth then flips because then it's like, wait, why is flat earth standing? Why, what are you doing wrong? Why is flat earth still standing? You know, round after round after round. If you don't take flat earth out in, right away, in, yeah, in a convincing absolutely. fashion, you are now going to be labeled as the person that uh, didn't do it. You know, the physics, and that, again, that is That's a, interesting. well, it's a, it's a big deal. I've talked to a number of academics that again, when you reach that certain level, would pass your master's degree into your PhD, if you're getting published, the the scariest word for anyone in the academic community is ostracized, which is if because yeah. they try so hard to fit in. You know, these are the people that had a tough time in school, in terms of fitting in with crowds, and all of a sudden it's like, okay, we're the top of academia. I've got my peer group, right? My peer group. That peer, you do really want the, the, that peer group to turn on you because you embarrassed them by going against flat earth. No, they, you do not want to be that person. Uh, if, if so they don't take the chance. They do not want to take the risk. They spent so much money on their education. They spent so many years mm -hmm. trying to get published. Uh, I mean, hell, I had a, a friend of mine, um, a psychiatrist who, who I, you know, we were really good friends and, and she, I said, look, you've got an inside road here. If you want to do a special paper on this, you know, to, to, to do a thing, you know, you could get published for sure. I, you know, she's been published before. And she goes, yeah, but then they're going to figure out eventually like that we dated. <laughs> and, mm. and she goes, I don't want to make that sort of connection. She goes, no offense to you, but she goes, but it was because of her established part in the academic community. So no, it's not just Neil. Mm. It's everyone. It's why Brian Cox won't do it. That and you throw in the, the third reason, which is it's beneath them. Flat Earth, you know, they look down. It's like, why? I, it's below me. I don't have to deal with that rabble. And so they, they, they don't. They treat us like we're, uh, you know, just this something they saw underneath stuck to their shoe. And they won't, they won't do it. They, and I, in fact, I, the real quick, there was, um, an academic group that I was talking to out of Canada and brand new PhD students, you know, the, the ink was still drying on their diplomas. And I said, look, your problem is the general public is, goes for the simple stuff. They go for the simple explanations. We have created an easier way to explain the universe than you. And, and they say, but it's not right. I go, doesn't matter if it's peer reviewed or right. It's easier to understand and it makes more sense to them. I go, if you want to stay in this fight, you're going to have to find a way to make it easier, make the universe easier to understand. And the response was exactly what I thought it would be. And that's like, yeah, but we shouldn't have to. I go, well, <laughs> I go, welcome to the war of attrition because um, <laughs> it's, it's now in your backyard. So what, what percentage, like, you know, I'm just a loose number, like, or, or even you could say, you think there's a lot of scientists 
that actually know and just want to like keep their niche and don't want to be exposed? Oh, uh, if you do the raw numbers, yeah, yeah, I, I guarantee. Um, I was talking to somebody just the other day. I remember I was doing the um, the Fallen State interview in Los Angeles when I was, what, in fact, why was I there? I don't even remember why I was in L.A. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, I was there. It was Shane Dawson's brother thing. Anyway, so, but they were trying to call, they were calling all these universities, trying to get somebody to get into the studio and debate me. And either they weren't interested but they said it was interesting. They they called uh, an Asian professor out of USC, and I wish I had his name. Not that he would admit to it anyway. And they said we called him up, and we said, yeah, yeah, we need someone to come in and talk about flat Earth you know, against Mark Sargent. And he goes, ooh, flat Earth. He goes, yes, I'd love to talk about that. And they go, okay, so you're going to be debating against. He goes, and, and he goes, whoa, 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 what do you mean against flat Earth? He goes, no, 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 I think it's a great idea. And they said, sorry, we wow. can't, we can't, yeah, we can't use you because of that and uh, so yes are there a number of professors out there that probably academia people that probably know sure if you look at this logically enough you're going to run into it i know some very intelligent people that are absolutely on board with this but they can't come out because they are just so worried about the backlash hell it happens with with um even podcast hosts all the time I've I've done a number oh, yeah. of you get, it's cancel culture. Cancel culture. Well, yeah, but this yeah. was this was bef this wasn't even true cancel culture. This was this was just they were worried about um, uh, ruffling the feathers of their audience. A perfect example would have been CBS. You know, oh, I got you. Okay, yeah, right, yeah. CBS yeah. did a, a stint with us down in LA, and um, they got Patricia Steer to to be interviewed. And she just crushed it, just just crushed it. Even the, the editing, they could, the best, even the edited parts that they used for her was were just brilliant. And it got a million hits very fast on YouTube. And then, That's awesome. yeah, I, it, I saw that. Yeah, right. and and then it got pulled. And the reason it was pulled, well, you know why? It was because the the CBS has an older audience, and you know all it takes is someone to write in, you know, a couple older people, and, you know, from the Church Muffin Club. Say, we're not going to watch your network anymore. And that was it. You know, that's all it takes is, you know, a couple handwritten notes or uh, an email in all caps. And they pulled it and they pulled it from their archives. And that was it. So, yeah, it's uh, it's it's tough. The academic community does not want to talk right, about so, it. So so since we're talking about fake space, um, I had seen uh, I think it was her, the, the person you just mentioned that did a really good um, uh, segment on the sun. Yeah. The misshapen son. Yeah. Um, and you know, she they showed it, and then they showed when you zoomed in that it drops off as as a dot. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. So, um, you know, just why? I, I just don't understand why more people don't know about this, You're and how you know all of space. What we've been taught, they say there's galaxies and all this stuff. How it could all be fake? I mean, this is what people, this is one of the biggest things, Mark. It, know, it is. Like, how could fake be fake? Well, it's fake because you don't, again, it's just straight up conditioning, meaning what you couldn't see the forest for the trees. We, we see this all sorts of different aspects of our life when we're growing up and we, we don't even notice things because we just don't, we're not looking for it. You know, you, you go years and years yeah. and years and all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, why the hell is a nickel bigger than a dime? You don't know. It just doesn't make any damn sense. Then all of a but you're staring at it, and it's right there in your face. So, but with with space, it's think of it this way: we believe that the, I, I'm ripping a line right right out of the Truman Show. We believe the world that is presented to us, plain and simple. And so, when we are presented with the globe when we're kids, we believe there's a globe. When we're told there's a solar system, we, we believe there's a solar system. Um, Think about bringing a person in from even 200 years ago, not even a caveman, just a person from 200 years ago into a planetarium, right? And you, you sit them down in a chair and, and, and say, okay, look up at the ceiling. And you show them the, the, the sky and the stars and Jupiter and the moon blows their mind, absolutely freaking blows their mind. It's like, yeah, but it's daytime. What, what, that, what am I looking at? They have no idea what they're looking at. And it's like, well, you're just looking at a projection. Who's to, you know, when it comes to space, 
think about who was telling you what space was in the first place. I mean, there's a reason why. And I know. Yeah, uh, every every ancient culture, I don't care if you say <laughs> the Greeks, oh, yeah, Greeks, we figured out it was a sphere. It doesn't matter. They still watch the sky. They still believe in all sorts of fun things. Every ancient culture drew the same thing. It's like, draw the world. They all drew the same snow globe. Why? Because when you look at the sky at night, what's moving? Are you moving or are the stars moving? Now, you can't break out of that illusion. It's of course the stars are moving. And if the stars are moving and you look low, you know, and they go over in this curved arc thing, you all of a sudden build this snow globe around you. And, and then 500 years ago, they say, oh, no, it's not that. It's the opposite. And you say, well, why would they do that? It's like, well, I've, I've got a couple theories on it. But one of them is you can't control the population. You can't be the ultimate power if you're not the ultimate power. Meaning, mm. if if you you can't, the government loses instant credibility if all of a sudden they say, okay, yeah, we're living in a giant, giant building built by people that are way more powerful than us. We don't know who it is. Uh, that, that Your credibility has ta been taken down a notch because now there's people who be like, yeah, so I don't know if I want to listen to you anymore. I want to listen to the, the dome people. Where are the dome people? It's like, oh, we should set up a dome church and dome shrines and, and do all this stuff. And then it just degrades from there. So kind of like the UFO thing, which has changed only recently, which is how can you rule the skies if you haven't ruled, the, if you're not ruling the skies? So, yeah. 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 Anyway. All right. So, so. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you about this because I saw this and I saw, they people use a lot of famous quotes right sure. they use quotes from Einstein and they use some very interesting quotes from Tesla mm -hmm. was Tesla a flat earther oh I think Tesla knew yeah I, I do okay. but he wasn't he wasn't uh, uh, bold enough to say it because why would he I mean Tesla was in his own different sort of life anyway we're talking about a guy that made stuff that was way beyond the pale i don't even know if he was supposed to be here i'm wondering if he just crashed in a <laughs> ship somewhere and got lost and because no he was making weird stuff i mean you heard about stuff that that you know things that could fit in the palm of your hand that could start earthquakes or laser guns yeah. laser guns that blew up sheep and and stuff like this and the guy was what i mean he was inventing all, i mean there was a reason why all his stuff was confiscated immediately after his death strange 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 guy the fit my favorite tesla thing was that he never stayed in a hotel room and i kind of follow it to this day he he was keenly aware if whatever number he was walking into was divisible by three and mm. and it's like wow he's just a weird guy so do i think he knew yeah i think he knew i think he knew and i think he corrupted um uh mark twain my favorite book by the way of all time is an unpublished book by mark twain called the mysterious stranger that because uh, he and he and Tesla were friends, by the way, in the yeah. in later part yeah, of I life. I, yeah, I did hear that. And the mysterious stranger, if you haven't read it, it's a weird little tale about um, how the devil shows up in Europe to a bunch of uh, in in the 1500s to some school school children, and basically shows them how the world works by by saying how easily man is you know this is the patterns that man falls into the the corruption how easily man can be corrupted basically he's doing the whole um you know w w uh, be careful what you wish for type thing he's like oh yeah you know i'll give you yeah. and then he'll he'll twist the wishes and he he, he catches people in their in the corruption anyway it's very very interesting so so, so you were, I just wanted, I wanted to ask you about this last time and I forgot mm. because I saw like, are you saying that uh, volcanoes, that they make volcanoes and that they manipulate the weather too? Well, and I know that was the toughest one for the clues because people could not get their head around that because they're saying, well, the magma system and the volcano system can't be artificial. And I go, why not? I go, the only reason you're fighting it is because we can't make it. And I go, even that's not true. I go, look, we can melt rock. It's a very limited, you know, to a limited capacity. I go, what do you think your car is? And your car is just pieces of melted rock that we took out the good stuff and left the rest of it. Um, the, uh, the, w but on a large scale, we can't do it. Now, if we had a couple billion dollars to throw around, you know, could we make a, a tiny, small volcano? Probably. Uh, but, yeah. But, yeah. but the point is, would you leave anything to chance uh organically no you wouldn't so let's say you have a pet lizard 
right, in a terrarium. Well, the, terrarium, the glass is yours, the light is yours, the little food dish, the little water dish, the gravel, and all this. Would you leave anything in that terrarium to chance? You know, to do organic. No, no, you're not going to. So especially with volcanoes, a magma system. I mean, <laughs> volcanoes are, are fun as it is, but you don't want a super volcano going off and wiping out civilization. So, yeah, you know, and you do think there's really not a lot of them. No. You know, they just, they're always like uh, looming. Yeah. So, one other thing, real quick, that I wanted to talk about was the, when people zoom in on the moon. Yeah. You know, I was talking um, with this. Uh, about this with somebody else the other day yeah. because when I saw that they said the moon's supposed to be so far away and the guy zoomed in and you could see it pretty good Yeah, with like an HD zoom so I know you say that the moon is a lot closer how far do you think the moon really is? Uh, a couple thousand miles well the, the bigger point is how big it is uh, which is the moon and the sun are approximately the same size, uh, which is why, you know, it, it, people, I love the people that go in, well, it's just a coincidence. It's just a coincidence. I go, okay, so the moon fits perfectly in front of the sun, even though supposedly the, the moon is only 2,000 miles wide and the sun is hundreds of thousands of miles wide, but it's 400 times closer than, than the, um, the, the sun, so it fits perfectly in front of it. That's a coincidence. Uh, the other coincidence, which people, well, a lot of people still don't know, is that the moon is completely locked in to, to where we see only one side of the moon. It never turns even a yeah. quarter of de a degree in, in years, ever. It's perfectly locked in. No one says, well, it's just the way it is. It's like, and also it's too big. Uh, the, the moon is way too big compared to all the other planets. Uh, it's, it's very, very large compared to like Jupiter's moons and Saturn's moons and all that stuff. Um, so and, and they have pictures where it's transparent, kind of. Sometimes right? it does appear to lose its thickness. I don't know why. I do. I know exactly what okay. the moon is. No, is it possibly a, a it, two D two D image or three D image being converted into two D? Possibly, um, but it's only we're our best guess is less than fifty miles wide and a couple thousand miles high. Um, and we know, we, wow. we say this because of the eclipse shadow. That's one of the big things, which is one of my questions I throw at people. I go, look, the eclipse shadow is too small. I go, the, the moon is 2,000 miles wide and the eclipse shadow is only 70 miles wide. How does that work exactly? I go, we can't replicate that down here. You can walk next to a building all day long. Your shadow is never going to get smaller. Uh, tell me what optics you, you need. And, and remember, we're talking about light that's supposedly going through a vacuum. Then it, it no no I it doesn't I don't see it. it in what in fact it, your shadow is always actual size or longer it never gets smaller your your shadow never turns into an action figure ever 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 and that's what we're talking about we're talking about the moon shadow shrinking down ninety something percent and we don't see that ever so no no and in fact in our model that it makes almost perfect sense which is the moon's fifty miles wide the light source is close. The shadow is 70 miles wide. There you go. Pretty easy. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah um, because the sun stuff that I saw, um, like I said, the, the footage I saw was very interesting because the, it was misshapen. Yeah. The sun was, you know, was, it was uh, very, very interesting. Well, you got to remember, okay, when, you're, um, when you're looking at the sun off in the distance, especially in the horizon, you're looking through thickness of atmosphere. That's another thing yeah, that yeah. just gets lost in the education system. We are not breathing in nothing. You're breathing in basically a fog, an invisible fog. You, you might as well be you, you might as well be swimming, really. It's just a thin version of water. In fact, it's ni it's eighty percent nitrogen, twenty percent oxygen. I'm rounding because of the trace gases. Who cares? And so that gets thick over time, and it distorts. It's called atmospheric lensing. And look it up. It's a real thing, which means you're looking, depending yeah. on the, the weather conditions. Sometimes you're looking through a magnifying glass, which chops off the bottom and the top of things. And people, and it's con in, in a constant state of flux. It is, it is design genius because people can't get a good grasp on it because it's constantly changing between the temperature. Yeah, I need some. Go ahead. I need some chopped off in the middle. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask you too about um, crop circles. I know you had mentioned those in your. Uh, in your documentary right. uh, or in one of the things somebody asked you about crops. I think it may have been 
um, one of the where you in, where you answer emails. I think that might have been somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Circles. Crop circles. Do I think they're real? Yeah, I do. Um, do I know exactly what they are? No, I don't. Do I think they were faked by two drunk British guys? Hell no. The as uh, was it? Um, oh, the woman. Her last name was Howe. Uh, she was one of the UFO people. She goes. It was one of the finest pieces of misinformation ever. And I was old enough to remember this, which was there was a British newspaper offering. 50,000 pounds, and this was in the early 90s, right? 50,000 pounds, to, which was the equivalent of, I think at the time, 75 grand to anyone that could fake a crop circle. <laughs> that could, wow. They would be willing to go on camera. So these two British yeah. guys from a pub go out with some boards and some, and some rope and make the worst crop circle ever, and they got paid for it. And and that was it. And then they just ran, and that's what the media ran, which was all well the crop circles. Here, here are the two guys at the crop circles, and and anyone that ever ever leans on that, again you you'll see the references to it all over the place. I go okay, fine. Explain Milk Hill. The Milk Hill crop circle was the most elaborate thing I have ever seen. It was done in the I think the I think the early nineties or the mid-90s, it was, I think, half a million square feet wide. And it had... So, Some of them are amazing. Yeah, it had so, so many so many perfect circles in it. I could have spent, I think, a week with Photoshop, and I couldn't have drawn it. And you're telling me over uneven terrain, I mean, severely uneven terrain, you created this beautiful pattern. Look up the Milk Hill crop circle. It is gorgeous. So, And you're telling me these two drunk guys did it in the middle of the night, in one night? They create a half a million square foot, and not only that, but crop circles all over the place, and and the ones outside of England. It's like no, 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 no. I think crop circles are real. Real. I think they're just. I my my opinion is they're just tags, kind of like graffiti by older civilizations, and uh, whether yeah. whether they're done by probes, you know, because if they want to, if you want to need, you know, remind me, and I'll send it to you. You want to see some cool stuff? Look at the crop. There's been very few instances of this. Look at crop writing. Where they t they create huge pages of line perfect line writing um, in Russia, and right off this freeway, and you can see all the cars pulled over. It's like looking at this crop, going, "What the hell is this? This couldn't have been done with boards. This couldn't have been done with." Uh, I can't even think of how we'd replicate it because there was no tracks going out to it at all. This is gorgeous. I'll, I'll send it to you. It's really really great yeah. stuff. The, re the reason why I brought that up is because it's similar to a lot of the other stuff. It's like, it's very interesting yeah. and it really can't be explained and people dismiss it so quickly. Oh yeah. And, and they very quickly by a lot of people. You're absolutely right. The, the crop circle thing was gaining a lot of traction and the powers that be said, okay, we've got to, again, all you have to do is create some disinformation in this case. Oh, we know who did it. It was these two British guys. And and that was it. And that and just and and you printed that in enough places and people like, oh, OK, well, apparently it's nothing. It diffuses it so well. And it was brilliant. They probably have the, the they probably have the best landscaping uh, company in Britain now. <laughs> yeah. Uh. All right. So. So. Um, all right. So let me just ask you this. We're going to wrap up in a little while. Um, mm hmm. So this is what people say to me, um, because, you know, there is a, a decent um, amount of stuff that I've seen that they talk about uh, religion, they talk about Jesus, and they talk about the devil. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you think, like, the devil's behind it, or that the devil, like, um, you know, he's deceiving us or anything? Not, not do you think that, but, you know, what, what, um, how do you feel about that being said? <sighs> you know... Uh, that's a good. No one's ever asked me that. Um, the you you know the old quote. The the greatest trick the devil devil ever pulled was was convincing the world he didn't exist. What if it was something yeah. more literal, convincing the world it didn't exist? Meaning, you know, if he was he was the guy that's running the things on the ground, uh, this would be a great deception. Uh, there's something in the Bible called, you know, in Revelation, the, the, the great deception. Wouldn't this kind of qualify? Which is you convince people that the world isn't what they think it is. Uh, I think that would be a, a, a great angle to go down. So, yeah, it's, it's possible, to lead, sure. To lead, them down a less right, to lead them down a less righteous path. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, again, anything to, anything to get the people to think 
the have less people believe in a creator because once the flatter things started coming out i mean again 50 percent of our members are hardcore uh, christians at least in america yeah but we we yeah, you, you said something Go ahead. Well, but because and, and the reason is, is because, well, if it is a snow globe or, or a building or pizza box or whatever it is, then it was built. It was created <laughs> by someone. And if it was created by someone, yeah. well, you only got two roads to go down. You've either got an older civilization that's much more powerful than ourselves or Santa Claus in a bathrobe. One of those two. <laughs> and at that point don't talk about santa mark well you know what i mean when, whenever they show whenever they show god it's always santa claus on sunday in a white bathrobe that's that's all it is but but it's let me have my fan but if it, it was if that was the case then i mean it's you're kind of splitting hairs because one man's ancient civilization is another man's deity i mean come on let's face it you'd have to if a giant gold spaceship landed in france in Paris right now, you'd have two groups of people that would walk up. And the first group would be the, the, the nerds and geeks and dorks like, oh, wow, they do look like Avatar, right? And then you have the other group of people that's like, these are obviously our creators. We must build a church in their name and then sacrifice the nerds. And that would be, that's how it would move forward. And, and the, seriously, churches would be founded in their names. Which is why I think there are rules you can't, kind of like Star Trek, the prime director, you can't, just, people have said, well, if there's UFOs, why haven't they landed anywhere? And taken some selfies and sh shook hands and signed a few things. It's like, because it would, <laughs> it would completely screw with everybody. You, you know, you're ch yeah. everything, the, all the powers that be lose credibility. I think there are rules involved, protocols. So you said something about, it was interesting, you said, the, the, I never heard this before, that a roulette wheel all adds up to 666? Yeah. So when I when I first made my, um, put, put the, the clues, I initially thought, well, okay, well, I'll go with the, 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 the model that seemed best at the time, and that was the Orlando Ferguson 1800s uh, roulette wheel. It looks like a roulette wheel. You can look it up, Orlando Ferguson. He, but it was definitely flat, but it had some dips, but it had, looked like a roulette wheel. And people said immediately, said, no, 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 you can't use a roulette wheel as, as an example. I go, why not? And they go, well, if you add up all the numbers of a roulette wheel, they all add up to 666. And, and it's absolutely true. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, that wow. is so wild. But it doesn't surprise me. And there's so many number things out there that are weird. But... Well, this, this I'll tell you um, what really, uh, you know, struck me when I talked to you, because our first conversation, um, I just put it out there. I said, Mark, are you 100 percent sure? Yeah. And you said without you said, yes. Yeah. And a lot of times when you ask, you know, uh, again, I don't want to call you a conspiracy guy. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> You're my favorite conspiracy. Oh, guy, okay? that's nice. <laughs> Uh, but a lot of times when you ask them, they say, or when you see them get interviewed, they go, it could be, it is, you know, this could happen, that could happen. But you just said, yes, I 100% believe it. Yeah. And um, I think that's very, you know, that's, a, like I said in the last podcast, that's attractive to me. Oh, good. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So this is one thing that people always say to me, and I hate this argument. We're going to wrap up after this. Okay. Um, how could we get away with it? And I used to get so mad at this years ago. But now, with technology and everything, and they're saying not one NASA employee. Not, I know, we know it's compartmentalized. Okay. I, but like you said, not, not one telemetry data one. Yeah. Not one astronaut. What about the diaper chip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, got, <laughs> I, go real far. I can answer that with this. Because, again, I, the, what makes me a little different than other conspiracy people is I put myself in their shoes. <laughs> Which is okay. Let's say I'm a black hat and I'm running. I'm let's say I'm part of the Illuminati and I want to keep this thing under wraps. What 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 precautions would I take? First of all, compartmentalization that that takes care of 99 percent of it, which is you don't have the janitor at NASA. You don't have any HR. You don't have the people that are polishing fuel systems. None of those guys know anything about anything. Anyone that's mission critical. Anyone that has first is is lying to the camera or lying about the data, and we're not talking about a lot of people, very few. This isn't like the Manhattan Project, which was kept a secret, you know, building uh, the United States. Yeah, 100,000 people. Yeah, 100,000 yeah. people. Yeah, right. But really all they were doing, 90% of them were just refining materials. Very few people were, yeah. were, in, were in the bomb-making business. So 
They make it sound like everybody knew and was keeping the big secret. Right, right. And yeah, of course they knew they were doing something, but if you don't know exactly what you're... But remember, this was different. Back then, there wasn't a lot of media, right? You know, CBS, NBC, ABC, they didn't weren't even a thing. They were radio. Uh, PBS didn't exist. You had newspapers. It was tough to do. But I'll give you a line. And a good job. A good job was a good job. Yeah, there right. you go. So the lot. So think about it now. It's the, the only two. The only two groups that would ever have be able to pull this off would be the telemetry guys, and the astronaut themselves. And the astronauts, you know, they're lying for the camera. They don't know exactly why. And the telemetry guys are lying, but they may not know exactly why. But even if they had suspicions, right? And this is where I'll, I'll give you. Um, I'll give you a movie reference. Why not? Pop culture reference from an older movie. Um, called Three Days of the Condor with Robert Redford, where in, okay. it's, it's a fantastic movie about how a CIA research group discovered something that another CIA thing was doing on accident and th and basically CIA versus CIA crime and get, the research group got wiped out and Robert Redford's running around for the rest of his, you know, the show running for his life because like they didn't do anything wrong, right? They just discovered something on accident. Yeah. And... He gets to the point to the end and he his boss is saying, look, come back in. We'll, you know, we won't kill you. And it's going, it doesn't matter. He goes, I've already given it to him. And he's pointing to the New York Times building behind him. And he goes, what have you done? And he goes, he goes, I gave it to him. He goes, I told him everything, right? And the, his boss smiles and he goes, really? He goes, how do you know they'll run it? And Robert Redford looks at him and he goes, what do you mean? They'll run it. And he goes, really? How do you know? And what he meant by that was... You make sure not only do you psychologically screen all these guys to make sure, you know, that you, they've got a certain moral flexibility, but you also I yeah. mean, you would do the standard stuff. Look, you're going to monitor their phone calls. You're going to monitor their emails. If an astronaut or we'll just use an astronaut because they're high profile. Right. Let's say Scott Kelly had yeah. second thoughts and he decided to is like, you know, if he even starts breathing in that direction. A, just a passing reference in an email or a conversation that's recorded. These guys are on him. They are on him. And, you know, they are with you, the carrot or the stick. And they're, you know, they don't leave anything to chance. I, I'll, I'll, I'll end it with this. There was a, in the, the movie Capricorn one, which I love so much because it, it's absolutely a movie. They'll never get remade because it's it's just so subversive it was an independent film about um uh, yeah. a, a fake mars yeah, mission OJ, OJ in oj's it, right? in it yeah oj is an astronaut yeah, who gets yeah. hunted down but yeah. the 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 most <laughs> intriguing part to me and it was it was one of the darkest moments in cinema for me was when the junior telemetry guy telemetry guy decides to run his own diagnostics because he thinks something's wrong with the computer and he takes it to his boss and he goes, yeah, I've been running my own program. His boss goes, you're running your own program? And which means, okay, now he's outside of his wheelhouse, which means immediately we are, we are watching him, right? And and, yeah. and he goes to his friend, you know, he's, he's, his friend is a reporter, right? And they're having drinks together at a bar. <laughs> they're playing pool. And, and, and his friend and, and the telemetry guy is going, yeah, you know. It just doesn't make any damn sense. He goes, it's not like the transmission can actually be coming from 70 miles away. You know, the, the Mars transmission. And and uh, Elliot Gould, who plays the, the reporter, he's like, he's like, what are you talking about? Right? And then all of a sudden, I mean, within six, not even 60 seconds, a phone call comes at the bar. This is back in the day where you had to go to the bar to pick up the phone. And, and it's like, phone call for you, you know, call him Elliot. And Elliot walks up to the bar. And, and it's a and it's a crank call, right? He uses static, blah blah blah, and yeah. and he comes, walks back to the pool table, the drink's still there, the pool kills still there. His friend is gone, gone. He wow. is he's gone from yeah. the movie, gone. And he when Elliot shows up at his friend's apartment, within I think, like not even two days later, he he goes to his friend's apartment. There's a woman living there. He he's been erased. I mean, like the magazines on her coffee table have all the right address, you know, everything. He has been removed from existence entirely. And so what's my point? My point is, is you're, you're saying, well, why haven't people come out? Well, yeah, that's the sort of threat we're talking about here, especially with, with the astronauts. Okay. You know, the astronauts are, are, are a different set of rules. It's not, it's not court. It's treason. 
These are all military guys. You don't get yeah, to do that absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. You know, that, that's a great point. That's a great point. So I just want to ask you this last question. Yeah. Um, I know last time I asked you if you've ever been threatened, and that was like a, a kind of a, a cool story. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was just like a funny, lighthearted kind of story. Yeah. But, you know, I remember when I first talked to you, you said that they del- you get the videos deleted and stuff like that. Right. You think they're investigating you? You think you're being watched? You think they really care? You know what I'm saying? I... Like, what degree is that going on? Yeah, well, there is there shadow banning in our community? Yes. Uh, we have been okay. we have been watched, and I've, I've answered this question in different ways over the years. Um, what I like to tell people is, I like, look, for whatever reason, they're not banning us. They're not, they could wipe, they could have stunted us years ago. They could have, you know, recommended. Give you more credibility. Uh, well, right, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, they have. They've helped us in some degree. So, I mean, not even a little bit. I mean, it's like recommended for you, Flat Earth videos, three years straight, just Flat Earth, Flat Earth, Flat Earth, Flat Earth. We were being recommended all over the place. If you didn't want us out there, you don't recommend us to anyone. I mean, I'm, I come from a programming world. I can tell you, it's easy code. Which is you just say if flatter you never mention these combinations of flat earth words to anyone, which they end end up doing, and the same thing with the the Google search engine, you know whatever you type in, make sure that flat earth related things comes up at the bottom of the list, and they didn't. So we were being, in my opinion, allowed to do this. Uh, flat earth was being allowed to be out there. They could have stunted us. They could have come after us. They could have crushed. They made up new rules and just crushed us into oblivion, and they didn't. So I believe that we are part of a bigger picture, a bigger plan. I mean, in just personal theory, mm. I think that Flat Earth was put out there to open the minds of people for something else. Like, we were the frame for a canvas that hasn't been seen yet. Something bigger. Something else. You know, we, we were the warm-up act. And so it's like, okay, what the hell's bigger than flat earth? It's like, oh, there's a couple things, you know, existence of another civilization. But, but yeah, no, we, we haven't been, I mean, I've got no threats. I've got no cars following me, no helicopters, uh, no, no weird things. I haven't been offered the carrot or the stick. Nothing, nothing to that. Degree. I don't hear any, I don't hear any clicks. I've been listening for clicks. The whole yeah, time. yeah, yeah. Now the only time we caught attention was during the obvious. Like when the, um, I did a show, one of my first guests was a, uh, uh, um, United States Navy Sparrow missile instructor. And he was on there. Yeah. And while we were on there, the DOD was pinging the hell out of our servers. And w- of course they would be because it's like, look, he's a Sparrow yeah. missile instructor for 10 years. I go, it, yeah. he's, okay. you don't know what he's going to say. You you know, what What if all of a sudden it says, oh, yeah, by the way, you can uh, countermeasures. All you need is a paper clip, a nine volt battery and a stick of gum. And p- they just f- freaking lose their minds. So I they, they have they been watching us? Yes. Um, they've made some moves to curb our enthusiasm. Like, again, removing the entire search results line out of YouTube, which some people say, oh, they didn't do that because yeah. of you. I go, absolutely. They did it because of us. Um, yeah. but, but the rest of it, no, we've been kind of, we're kind of being corralled into certain directions, but we're, I was going to say manipulate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it it's, but like it's some subtle, are, but some people are making a living, a living off debunking. Yeah, you know, yeah, like absolutely. Abs- absolutely. But nobody, in my opinion, people say, oh, you know, are there any shills or any uh, people that are agents that are in the community? It's like, no, that's the weird part. You don't even, I mean, if they are, they're very low level. They're very, um, they're under the radar, whoever they are, because I have not. We, who are they? Americans working overtime? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, because we, we've, so. we've never had a, a high profile content creator turn. I mean, I've been accused of it all the time. It's like, oh, he's an agent. It's like, really? Well, when in the six years am I going to, you know, reveal my grand plan to uh, derail everything? Because I've been doing the same thing for six years. But but I haven't seen it. You with must them. be a real genius. You are calc. You are plotting. Yeah, non-stop. yeah. I, I I've told people I go either I'm the best secret agent in the world or I am the worst secret agent in the world, because I, but you can't be both. So. All right. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, yo, we're going to wrap it up, but thank you so much, Mark. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you know, thank you, thank you very much for having me, and uh, hopefully we'll talk yeah, again yeah. soon. Yes, yes. This has been Quinn Spiracy, and um, I, you know, I'd love to talk to you soon. All right, man. All right, All right. Talk, take care. Okay, bye bye.